was the most important advancement in medicine in my career. Uh, and then for me to say that, that's quite a bit because I've done a lot of things in, in cardiology. I was fortunate to really be at the, uh, at the cutting edge of cardiology and uh, it provided me with a great career and a lot of fun and great humbling experience to take care of people. But in the back of my mind, as I stood there at 3 o'clock in the morning, putting a balloon in an artery and then opening it up and putting a stent in is, what caused this thing in the first place? I never had a chance to explore that until George forced me to read some science. So it takes me back to my first year of medical school when a, a man was our lecturer in biochemistry. His name was uh, Chandler, Philip, excuse me, Handler, Philip Handler. And uh, Dr. Handler was a, a Nobel laureate nominee and he was just a brilliant biochemist. But he was also one of the most remarkable speakers I'd ever heard in my life. And uh, frankly, about three minutes into his lecture, I put down my pencil and just listened. Continuity, the thoughts, the process, and the explanation of science was amazing. Years later, I'm hearing someone on a YouTube and in person talk about protandum and oxidative stress, and that's Dr. Joel McCord. And Dr. Joel McCord also trained at Duke where Dr. Handler was and where I went to medical school. And so he trained with Dr. Handler. So he was of that ilk and that silk. And he's a brilliant speaker as well. Not quite as melodious as Dr. Handler, but he's really very good. If you haven't listened to his YouTube, you should, because he's very articulate and very good. So that brings me to where I am today. I'm a cardiologist, a physician, and my avocation, my whole passion has been to take care of people. And so if that's what I want to do, then what can I do that can help everybody? And that is to understand the very genesis and beginning of every disease. So if you were to take a look at a cell and its nucleus, let's label them so you'll remember them. Here's the nucleus. The nucleus is the command center of the cell. It gives out the orders about what the cell is going to be doing today, what products it's going to be making and its machineries, uh, what are the mitochondria going to be doing. There's the mitochondria. What are the mitochondria? Mitochondria are the engines that create the energy. The energy is called ATP. Dr. Hammer used that word for the first time with me in 1963. Didn't know what he was talking about at the time, but by God, I do today. So the nucleus sends out the command and says we need to make some carbohydrates today or we need to make this protein or that gene or that chromosome and that's what happens. How does that happen? That's the discovery, how it all happens. When you and I are born, we have, I'm going to use this as a quantitative number, we have that many antioxidants and this many free radicals. You get the free radicals and the antioxidants from mom because you have her blood that comes to you through the umbilical cord. And this is wonderful because now you're being nourished. And as we come into life into the world, we start breathing on our own. So we're not only now on our own from that point of view, but we are creating our own energy source in terms of bringing in oxygen. And when we bring in oxygen, we create energy. And I tell you where the energy was created, mitochondria. So we bring in oxygen with our food substances, take it to the mitochondria, which are little energy factories, and we make energy, but we also make free radicals. So we end up when we're 30, 35 or so, with this many antioxidants and this many free radicals. That's called oxidative stress. The excess production of free radicals over your ability to neutralize them with antioxidants. So now I've covered the words that are used in some of the videos you've seen, but how does that all happen? It happens because this command center 
works in conjunction with a protein that sits in our cell. That's for lack of, of not getting too technical, I'll call it NRF2. And that's what you'll see on the bottle. NRF2. It's a protein that's anchored there and it's kind of watching what's going on in the cell and it is communicating with the nucleus, command center. But when it's anchored, it doesn't have the ability to send it immediate messages. So what does protandum do? Protandum comes in and when we take it in, five herbs which we have had in our biosphere from the beginning of time, put together in a certain combination, it activates the release of this NRF2 and sends the NRF2 message up to the nucleus and we have a transcription information going up which says to the nucleus, hey boss, we are overwhelmed with free radicals. We've got to do something about this our engines have been busy making more and more uh, uh, proteins to combat the free radicals. What's that called? Inflammation. So when you have free radicals, you get a response from the body called inflammation. And that is the reaction that is uniformly going to occur when you have that free radical not neutralized. Why? because that free radical, when it doesn't get neutralized, attaches any place it wants to. It can attach to one of the engines here. It can attach to the mitochondria. It can attach to the cell membrane. It can attach any place. And when it does, it injures the cell. The body responds by making more anti-free uh, radicals, which are called pro-inflammatory, I'll just make an eye here, pro-inflammatory molecules. And that always ends up in what? A scar. So this always ends up in a scar. And there you are, scars replace cells. Too many cells replace, replace organs. That's disease. This is the beginning of all disease. So this is the beauty of what's been discovered. The mechanism by which we can cut back on this process of getting too many uh, free radicals and too little antioxidants. When protandum is given, NRF2 sends a, a message to the nucleus and we start making life-saving enzymes and we turn our machinery back to making antioxidants and we make millions per second. There is nothing we can take in by mouth that will do that. Nothing can replace the beauty of our own cells creating their own antioxidants. So powerful. Now, focus for a minute on this is called NRF2. Well, if there's a 2, there must be a 1. And there is a 1. And the 1 is another transcription factor. And that factor, NRF1, is a very interesting compound of herbs that activates the mitochondria. Think about this. Who's working the hardest in the cell? The mitochondria. They're producing all the energy. Who gets damaged? Just because it's working. Just like your car engine. Mitochondria. So when you give NRF1, it upregulates the repair of the mitochondria and increases the number of mitochondria. And so you make more energy and you're more efficient. The cells are more efficient. So you really need to have the NRF2 molecule there, don't you? Because you're going to make, with more energy and more combustion, more free radicals. So it's a beautiful biochemical cycle in which we take in oxygen to live. We also take in oxygen and it causes our disease and aging process. The aging occurs when we get all the inflammation at the cellular level. We don't know it until we're a little later in life and we get scars, and scars replace our tissue. And even cancer can be said to be part of this because if the repair here with a scar or of the injury is not done perfectly, we can get a new protein, right? And that just takes off by itself and that's called cancer. So what the discovery is is so beautiful 
is that we now understand a whole lot more about the mechanism by which our bodies age and the mechanism by which our body can produce protection against aging and disease. Slow down the progression. It will never stop, by the way, guys, until you die. That's when you stop breathing. But you can take a whole lot longer to get there. And interestingly enough, just to give you a little tidbit of the latest paper on this process, they took some mice and they gave them minimal amount of estrogen. They used two or three different products and they used protein. And they used metformin, something you've probably heard about, which is a diabetic drug. And metformin had no effect on cellular life prolongation. There was a 7% increase in cellular, or in the longevity of the mice, not in the cells, in the mouse, the mouse himself with protein. Now if you're 60 and you get 7% increase, that's another 4.2 years. If you're 75, that's another, you get the picture. So we're going to see more and more of this data because it's going to tell us that the mechanism by which all this occurs and the protection we're getting when we use what nature gave us to begin with, this cycle of plants and animals that live and breathe together uh, and protect each other and are necessary for us to grow and live and exist is really at work. So the science brought me here. The science sustains me. We have about, I don't know, easily over a thousand patients, maybe 1,500 on this product now. We recommend it for everyone. Why? because everyone breathes oxygen. We recommend it for every mammal, am, mammal if you have pets at home because they breathe oxygen. And we think that this is a beautiful product to take 